All right, let's hop in here and talk about a couple different uh, situations, players, landscapes that may be interesting here. Let's go Jaguars backfield. Duval uh, was pretty promising there for, for the old Jacksonville Jaguars there for a minute, but cooled off a little bit. I know that's your squad over there. Um, Which, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, we got our boy J. Mike here. Find him on the Twitters, at J. Mike Check. Uh, just just go find him on Twitter. You got all this other stuff. Pl- plug yourself real quick again, J. Mike, for the listeners. <laughs> uh, at J. Mike, check on Twitter. Uh, po- podcast every now and again. Uh, a little bit of flavor in your ear. A little Craig Mack. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it from there. That's good. All right. So the Jags backfield. It was, it was you know, we did a redraft thing. We did some dynasty stuff. J. Rob was a, was a guy that you were grabbing late. And you felt good about it, and then, you know, really paid dividends through the first couple of weeks by much to my surprise. And then ET, the ET haters who didn't like him were like, "See, I told you so. He fucking sucks." <laughs> and now, you know, it's it's you know we're getting we're, mm-hmm. the, the the usage has gone down for J. Rob three weeks in a row. The explosive plays and all the the metrics are leaning more towards. ETN right now, the coaching staff saying, hey, it's our fault that we haven't gotten this guy more involved. He deserves to be more involved in this game. So let's let's just talk about that Jaguars backfield and, and what you're thinking, what you're seeing, how you're feeling. I, I feel like you, you you told my whole life, uh, <laughs> killing, killing me softly with his words there. Yeah. Because I, I like both of those players a lot. Yeah. Big ETN fan. And obviously James Robinson is really stinking good. And I think one of the questions that we often have to ask is how many times do we have to have the uh, undrafted running back go crazy before we understand like it, it's really not a long term game with them, like it's not a it's not a RB one forever. And especially if coming back from an Achilles, like yes, James Robinson's okay, numbers are inefficient, but then that, like you said, the last couple of weeks, all of a sudden ETN's matching him in carries. Uh, ETN looks very explosive every time he touches the ball. The offense is struggling as a whole because Trevor's not making a lot of good decisions right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's it, it's not great, but ETN is the source of big plays, which I think is why Doug Peterson and company are like, "Hey, we're not we're not generating much else. <laughs> we can't really get Trevor to get his head fully out of his behind. So we've got to be able to hit these big plays. So the inefficiency of James Robinson has now given way to, and, and James Robinson wasn't always inefficient, but this season super inefficient." It's giving way for ETN to get more work. So he's matching him in carries in the last couple of weeks. I think eight, two weeks ago, they both had eight carries. And I think this past week, they both had 10 carries. ETN is getting uh, passing work now. And you're, you're starting to see what people were excited about with ETN. And so now, here we are. We're, we're getting into the bye weeks. Uh, so you're likely going to be running both of those guys out, hoping for the best uh, as we get into these bye weeks. But from from this point forward, where do you guys see these guys? How do you see their values or how do you see their production? What, what, where are you placing your bets? Who wants it first? I mean, I guess you got, you have to give, you have to give it to ETN. I mean, he was the first round draft pick. He's the, but what does that mean? Wait, 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 wait. You're, you're being all, you're being all general. I'm about to, I'm about to put Penny in the corner, putting baby in the corner mm-hmm. right here. You, you, you lean toward ETN. Does that mean he, he's an every week start? Does that mean that you're going out and actively trying to trade for him? What does that look like for you? Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna send a few offers out for ETN here because he hasn't had the blow up week yet. He hasn't I would if I can move like a David Montgomery, a Miles Sanders kind of piece for ETN, I think you might be able to make that work because they've been having good weeks. ETN's still kind of He's still stuck in the mud a bit in terms of box score production, so we haven't seen that yet. So maybe you're trying to grab while the window's still open, but while the window's still open, and I mean, there's no there's no ties to J. Rob here. So I mean, look, I mean, look at Philip Lindsay. He had two great years, and now he just got signed off the practice squad for the Colts. So I mean, it's all about the money when it comes to the NFL. So I mean. If you're cheap, they're gonna they're gonna play you. But at the end of the day, if they're paying these guys first round draft cap, they're gonna play him. So yeah, I think that I think you have to give the you have to give the edge here to ETN. I think he is the more explosive player. He's the better pass catcher, um, and he could help move this Jaguars offense to the to 
where they want to be because of his ability in space. Okay. I know everyone's looking at me. I got the Clemson. Uh, <laughs> I got the Clemson everything over here. I have a hard time talking about these guys on the mics because I don't know how to not be a homer. I don't know how to <laughs> take the emotion out of it, bro. I don't know how to talk with my head and not my heart because it's okay to be a homer. I mean, I I just I know that Etn's best days are definitely ahead of him. Like, <laughs> like he this dude's a fucking stud. He's a fucking stud talent. He's a stud on and off the field. It hasn't come to fruition. I can feel it down in my plum. It hasn't come to fruition just yet. <laughs> um. You know, I mean, it's going to, though. I, I, is he an every week starter? You know, it depends on what we're talking about here. You know, did you draft him this past year with the hype in the third round? You probably have to play your third round startup pick. Um, did you get him in a rookie draft and you already had an established team and you got some other better options? You know, maybe you're deciding whether to flex him or not. Maybe you don't need to force him in, but it hasn't. You know, he finally had a decent week with 14 points, but and in, in, in before that, you know, he only broke 10 just barely one week. And Robinson was looking awesome there to begin the year. And yeah, I guess it probably doesn't work out for undrafted free agents unless you're Arian Foster, but short list of of undrafted <coughs> players. So I mean, I understand getting out when it's hot for the undrafted player even though i mean to begin this year you wouldn't think that he was undrafted or had an achilles He's injury good. you know what nope. i mean no nope. good so in terms of uh james robinson right yeah. like he, you wouldn't but etn's coming off of his own injury and this is the first action he's ever had you know he's basically a rookie it's basically his rookie season yeah. it took now, I'm not, not I'm, I'm not comparing him to these guys, but it took Jonathan Taylor several games to figure it out. It took it's taking Brees Hall several games to fucking take over that backfield, you know? And and we're seeing the takeover now. I think this is a awesome smash by opportunity for Travis Etienne. Now take that for what it's worth. I got Clem I went to Clemson. I met my wife at Clemson. <laughs> we watch every single Clemson game. I've seen every snap of Travis Etienne. Uh and I'm never gonna be and off. You should of know him, he so. stinks. <laughs> Man, cue the fight song. I know that the I know that the <laughs> lack of lateral agility doesn't mean fucking shit when you have wicked torque and speed and catching ability. Talk. And I'm not concerned about his ability to rush the ball between the tackles. Like this man gets it done. He got it done for us. He was the best player on the field us. every time he fucking took the. He field. can say us. That's fine. Okay. I went there, okay? I gave them money to give me a fucking that's a, degree. That's, that's the one you can say us about your high school football team and your college football team. That's it. It, You know. What, yeah. Where do I find those rules about yeah. who, who Those are my rules. Out? Those are my rules, okay. and those are in stone. <laughs> what else you got? Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. What else do I have? Mm -hmm. I just gave. I just laid it all out on them. Put it all. Left it all on the field. Go buy Travis I like Etienne. You. Go buy Travis Etienne. <laughs> Go buy. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I think that's, that's fair. Uh, what do you think, J. Mike? And and I think I, I was saying the whole undrafted thing, partially tongue in cheek, um, but also recognizing like James Robinson is it like like you said Jay Wayne he doesn't play like a undrafted player <laughs> he's really stinking good, uh, and and when you can be really good on a very bad Jaguars team last season, mm -hmm. uh, a la Damian Pierce good on a really bad Houston Texans team this year obviously he was drafted but still point being. Being really good running back for a really crappy team. Drafted in the That's fourth round, so it's basically he didn't get drafted at all, basically, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> no point in ever putting a fourth round draft pick on your team. Not. I didn't Dynasty Twitter is the first. Well, I didn't mean to start a fight, my bad. Yeah. My bad. I'm not fighting <laughs> just, you. I'm just, fighting uh, Dynasty Twitter, not you, J Mike. I'll never fight you. I will, I just, I will I let just, you punch me in the face if you wanted, man. Never that, J Mike. I know you would it's never all, it's punch me in the face. It's always love. It's all love. I do. J want to Mike, see you one real of the nicest. I do. I would love to see J Mike pissed off. I, he's like the it's nicest not. guy. In those the, were my in football days. Those sphere. were fun times. No, it was. Those were fun times. I what could I say to, to make J Mike mad? I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> don't just don't. <laughs> but but the I, I just like obviously I, I don't want to belabor this point. James Robinson, uh, I, I don't know that he's someone that I want to move picks for right now or like even a 2023 second right now 
I don't know that I'm comfortable giving off of that for James Robinson, even though he's shown to be really good. This Jaguars offense is confusing. I don't think that they really know who or what they want to be. And even with the things that they want to be, they're not executing anywhere near what, what hopefully they will become. So it it's, I, I think that neither of them are meeting expectations. I think they're both kind of below expectations for, for this point in the year. And I think that there's hope. I don't know that they're both going to be fantasy viable, though. And I think that's the that's the problem. Again, we're talking about the, this whole placing your bets thing. Uh, you, you like to place your bet on the younger guy who's all the juice, and I'm a big ETN fan over here as well. And James Robinson's shown it and done it. And, been, again, really good. Now, of course, he's coming back from the Achilles. And this this whole thing where people are coming back from Achilles and not being terrible and, and maybe it just takes trend. a little bit of time, right? But but it's a new – yeah. It's some, but we were talking about on, it. But. We talked about it with the medical advancements and, and we got into it about Kevin Durant in the offseason and how he's come back from an Achilles and – like is the it, uh, is the Achilles for the running back the new the Tommy new John for pitchers? Like Tommy John surgery for pitchers used to be a death nail. Now it's just yeah, but I mean, probably not even. It's probably not that bad because that takes like a full year to recover. Well, I'm just from, saying, right? but but, the, but the Tommy John surgery used to be like, look, you're just going to come done. back unless you're done. Like yeah. you're going to be a shell of yourself. Is that? I mean, I mean, I know there's a big long list of guys that had ACL or Achilles that never <laughs> ever did anything ever again, and then you saw da- Dante Foreman popping off here and there. It took not like that three he was, years. Um, and then you know Marlon Mack. Folk yeah, but how hero. many of those guys were bum ass running backs before the Achilles? Yeah, or mm. middling running backs before the Achilles. I mean, Dante Foreman had some steam coming out of Texas. He was like no, a fucking didn't. first nope, round nope, star, nope. Uh, dynasty, no. two thousand yard picks. running back. Stop. What are we talking about? What are Stop. you talking he about? Wasn't good. Okay, that's very subjective over uh, there yeah, and incorrect. Agreed. Uh, I, I think the history would say that I was correct. Well, he tore his ACL or tore his Achilles. Yeah, took a while which to come back. if you didn't know, that's a death sentence for running backs. You can never. <laughs> there's a big long list of guys that have never come back from an Achilles. All right, he didn't look that bad filling in for Derrick Henry last year. No, he so didn't. probably helped you win a championship if you had that man on your team or I, Hilliard. I tend to to lean probably a little bit where you are, Jay Mike. I w- I'm I'm fine with buying ETN because I I believe in the talent and. Seeing what that would cost, uh, Montgomery and Miles Sanders, maybe Miles Sanders. I'm probably a little bit more um, privy to to Montgomery. I, I just really, really like what what Montgomery's done throughout his career, and he's about to, you know, all he's done, all you he heard is Herbert, Herbert, Herbert this year, and the team likes him. And as soon as her, he's healthy, Montgomery's back out there crushing. Um, I think Montgomery's been one of the most undervalued players on a terrible team playing through some injuries. Um, so I'd probably keep Montgomery, but I get it. I'm fine with that. Miles Sanders, if I could maybe turn Miles into something plus for, for ET, maybe I would do that. People do like Miles Sanders. They always have liked him because he yeah. was the analytical guy, and it was like you got to take him over Josh Jacobs and uh, Miles, Montgomery. Montgomery. And so, he, you know, now that he's coming back and scoring points. Yeah, and as much as you want to say that, shouldn't matter like definitely the court of people's opinion of of players definitely weighs in on how long their value stays at a certain point uh, but depending the league like um, you said yeah you know home but leagues where them boys aren't on twitter i typically want to look at stat lines you why, know? why do we just see you know j-rob go from you know pretty good usage and being pretty good pretty decent from coming back and now we, like he just didn't look quite the same hasn't had quite the same mm-hmm. success now is that just be just how the game went and it just got unlucky a little bit here and there and you know they need etn to be the spark because their offense is a little funky and broken right now um so i do think that you could see a little bit of this kind of going throughout the season where you get j rob on one game and et on another game and it's not going to deter me from getting et it's that j rob's a pretty good player um and and the Jaguars are just they got two good players. I mean, you know, we're just not going to kick J. Rob to the side with Etn because he was, you know, Urban Meyer's first round pick. If he's good, he's good. He should play. Um, you know, what the allure was is that you thought that Et Et would get some time to establish himself without as the guy, J-Rob. and it'd be harder for J. Rob to come back and take it. And that hasn't been the case. So, you know, and you could say, well, if he's the first round pick and, and he's that good, then he should just 
take it and run with it. But I think that's a good point. Like you said, he basically is a rookie this year. And it took even the elite players a lot of the times, unless you're Damian Pierce, didn't take him any time at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> From the second he stepped on the field. Um, but no, I, I'm, I'm interested in buying ETN. I, I think this Jaguars offense is probably going to be pretty ebb and flow. And, and the point scoring for them could be pretty ebb and flow. Do I feel a little bit better about ET being in the flex spot of my lineup if I had to. And, and maybe he could work into the RB2 right now. And hopefully by week 10, we're saying, yeah, he's an every week RB2 in ET. Just the juice looks there. I mean, the hands are fine. I know a lot of people will say that, that he's a Fugazi receiving back. Uh, but I think he can catch just fine. Who the fuck's saying um, that? Uh, so it was the, it was the big thing in his senior year that he couldn't catch. He was scared. No, no, no. He I'm, said I'm, no. He said at one point he was scared catching the ball. You can look it up. He said that I'm saying guys like Jay Moyer on Twitter and Matt Waldman and all and and one of the rocket astronaut guys they they like to come on and talk shit about how you know. E.T. isn't really a pass catcher, and I think he catches the ball just fine. As he had some dumb drops and some not great handsy moments, is he is he a slot receiver out there? No, probably not. Uh, but I think he can catch the catch the ball just fine to get it done uh, throughout the game. So yeah, E.T. I, I I feel fine about buying him. J. Rob's a restricted free agent after this year. We'll see what happens. So you said you're pretty much out though on buying any J. Rob if if the trend continued to maybe just go down and E.T.N. took a hold of this. Yes, yeah, tr trend. The trend is terrible. The the snaps, the snaps, snap percentage right. is going up for ETN over the last what three weeks, four yeah. weeks, and then they're going down the last three or three or four weeks for for J Rob. And like you said, they they get out after the season with with no issue. Um, obviously, the team is not not as good as they were ho hoping as they st first started out. And if if J Rob's calling card is not going to be, if, if he's not going to be super efficient and he's not going to be getting volume, then that's, that, that's not a recipe. Like I think that you would hope for, Hey, I, I really hope that this is like a, a, a poor man's version of Chubb hunt. Right. Mm -hmm. Could I get a poor man's version of that? And we're like, we're not even, we're, right. we're, we're not getting that from the duo. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I would not be actively looking to, to bring yeah, Robinson. We're in a homeless shelter. We're not even. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard. These interest rates. You see <laughs> <Yeah>. these interest rates. <laughs> I got to address this Travis oh, Etienne Jesus receiving Christ. thing. Well, Matt was like, he said he's scared to catch he said the he ball. He was spooked. That was that was July 2019. I so that's coming off of 2018. Year, I said his senior year in high, senior year in college. No, or not his, his senior his year in college. Year. That, that was. 2018. Whatever. It's that was his said. sec. That was his sophomore year. It's, it was still okay. said. It at was one his point. sophomore I'm year. I'm sorry for messing he up was the spooked. timing. He caught 17 receptions. His no, 12 receptions. His sophomore year. Now, my man Travis Etienne goes to work on the things that he doesn't do well. He comes back and in the next two years catches 37 and then 48 catches in saying. subsequent years. So if my man coming out as a true freshman who didn't catch many balls in college and was learning how to play the college game, still electrifying as hell and, and crushing it from a rushing standpoint, needed a minute to figure out how to catch the ball and then went to work and showed you and comes back and catches 37 his junior year and then 48 his senior year. Like, I know people don't care about reception numbers. They only care about target share, it's but it had to have not, been not fucking true. good with that many receptions. You know, that blows Zach Reed's minimum threshold out of the fucking water Eight, here. 83%. Like, he fucking crushed it from the receiving game. I was game. just saying. And he wasn't that good his freshman and sophomore year catching the ball. It shows in the numbers. But then he worked on that in the offseason, and now he's awesome. Like, my man's awesome. And, yes, he's dropped a couple of bad ones. Awesome's a stretch. He's dropped a couple of bad ones. It fucking happens. The best players in the league lead the league in drops. Okay. How much time you got, buddy? <laughs> so all fucking night. I just just saying it was said. I wasn't saying anything about it. I was just. It, like, I'm year. sorry for saying something about your firstborn son, Jesus. <laughs> Second. <laughs> for, he only has one son. It was wrong. That's all I'm saying. It wasn't wrong. It was fucking said. He said, it was, he said that in his ju senior year. It's I'm sorry. I messed right, right, the timing up. Why are we getting caught up in such it's a fucking semantics? Details well, that's here. the type of shit that gets that, that he remembers and thinks that he's scared to catch the ball. And like that's the narrative. And people do. A lot of people dislike Travis Etienne. As soon as they someone said something about lateral agility, that's all you fucking heard. Like, 
Anyway, you can't talk nope. about clubs and players. Holy well, I was shit. trying to stay out of it, and you like everyone looked at me to say what I wanted to say. I mean, I just wanted an opinion. I didn't. There need it is. I apparently I didn't leave I didn't it all on the table. I need to double back on, on catching balls over here. Well, I just want the people to know that my man was fucking crushing catching balls. Well, all right, I think he's finally done. If you want to just calmly I'm, I'm rebuttal, good. I'm okay. good. I'm good. <laughs> all right. Don't but, say anything else over there for me about it. <laughs> it was fucking said. I'm sorry I messed the timing up. Jesus. My, my apologies. Apologies you, not accepted. I feel like this is the Golden Girls <laughs> arguing about God. something. Just old women. <laughs> fucking Blanche over here. I definitely want to be Rose. She had the most fun.